All right, guys. Today's the day. We're going to be replacing the TXV. Um, and this is a follow-up to the, the last video, the TXV Troubles video. Um, if you hadn't seen that, you should go back and, and watch that one first and see uh, about the diagnosis of the, uh, the TXV. And uh, today we've got the part and we're going to go put this thing on. Um, I'll leave the, uh, the, the previous video in the description, okay? Alright, well, uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. Alright, <clears throat> so first thing we're going to do, we're going to get these, uh, get these gauges hooked up and we're going to recover this refrigerant that's in here. Um, we've got to get the refrigerant out before we can open up this system. So I'm going to get all this stuff hooked up, start recovering it, and then we'll go up and take a look inside the evaporator. I'll, I usually like to just recover it all and add new refrigerant. Um, just in case there was any contaminants uh, in the uh, in the old refrigerant, so I think that's what we're going to do. We're just going to recover all the refrigerant out of this, and that way, you know, we can pull a really good vacuum and make sure we don't have any contaminants in this system, so uh, we won't have any more TXV issues. All right, so I'm going to get these hooked up and recover the refrigerant, and then we're going to go up and take a look inside. All right. And there she is. So let's get this. First thing we're gonna have to do is get this vent pipe out of the way so we can get this door open, which is where our TXV is gonna be sitting. So I'm gonna get this uh, vent pipe swung over somewhere and we'll start recording again. All right, I think that'll be out of the way enough. So. <laughs> there it is. So right here is your TXV, and this one luckily is a um, it's the kind that you screw on both sides, so you don't have to do any type of soldering to it. The system should be almost pumped pumped down or um, evacuated by now, so we're going to go check on that. We're going to get the new TXV up here. You can see exactly how it goes. It's gonna go back just like that. All right, so let's go make sure the refrigerant's out and we'll get started on taking this old TXV out of here. All right, so just real quick on the expansion valve and how it works. So what's happening is your hot liquid is coming through your liquid line going into the expansion valve. Your The sensing bulb that's attached to your suction line is uh, measuring the superheat of the system. So there's a superheat spring that's in here and it opens and shuts to change how much uh, pressure it's letting go through. So this, ex this expansion valve is changing this high pressure to its boiling point and lets it go through this evaporator. So once it goes through here, this bulb is reading the temperature, it's determining how much to open or close, it goes through here, boils off the refrigerant into this evaporator, and makes it cold. All right, after getting all this uh, stuff off, this is our sensing bulb here. This is what um, makes the spring inside the TXV go up and down, and that's where the problem usually occurs is the mechanism in the TXV that is <clears throat> opening and closing can get stuck, or it can just not work properly, open and close not enough, um, and, that, and that's usually caused by some type of non-condensables in the system. Um, that has gotten into that orifice and it's making it sticky. All right, so um, I'm gonna get this taken off and then we can start taking the TXV off. All 
All right, so now we're gonna take this uh, nut off here. Sometimes you have to get a, a second wrench and hold on this side, but it looks like this one came off okay. And make sure you pay attention to this side because you don't want it twisting and getting kinked up. Um, so if you have to, you got to get a wrench on that side to hold it. And there you go. There's the old one. Let's get the new one on. So you're going to have a pack that's going to have these washers in it. These little blue washers, and you're going to want to put them in right here. I'll show you. Set that in place like that. And then on this side. Just like that. Make sure this thing is pretty tight on here. Alright, so we got our bulb on. Nice and secure at about 2 o'clock. You want to make sure that the hole underneath of this is touching your line. It doesn't need to have a gap in the middle where the line is bending some. You want to make sure you're on a flat piece where it's touching all the way across. All right, so we've got to get the uh, foam insulation, wrap this with it completely, and then we'll put our armor flex over. Um, but yeah, that's it. Completely done. So I'll get all this finished up and we're gonna go um, just pressure test it real quick and then we're gonna pull a really good vacuum. And also, don't forget your little piece here. It goes over your line right here just so it doesn't keep, because over a long period of time, this thing will vibrate and it will eventually make a hole into the copper and cause it to leak, so, um, and that'll ruin the entire TXV. So make sure you put something, if you don't have this, put something in between this and that line or you're gonna have problems down the road. All right, so we pressure tested. Everything looks good, no leaking anywhere. We're gonna finish getting all of our insulation around this bulb. All right, so when it comes to the, the bulb, I like to wrap it very well. Um, I'm sure a lot of you probably think it's a little overkill, but I like to overdo it sometimes just to make sure it's really good. So I'll get my piece right there, and then I'll get another piece and go over the top of it, and I'll show you how it looks whenever I'm finished. I'll get some zip ties and go around and then maybe a little electrical tape. So let me get that done real quick and I'll show you. All right, and that's how it looks when it's done. The main purpose for this insulation is to not let this bulb have any other temperatures anywhere close to it besides the temperature of this line. So if there's any other, any places where that bulb can read anything else besides what's inside this line, it's not gonna work correctly and not work as good as it should. So always make sure you're very well insulated for your bulb. So we have the, our normal insulation that comes with the bulb around it. And then we got this piece that goes about halfway. This piece covers the top and squeezed in tight. It, uh, <clears throat> it's very well insulated and it will not read any um, outside temperatures at all. All right, so let's get this door back on it and uh, we're gonna get started on our vacuum. All right, so we're gonna get our vacuum pump hooked up. I'll tell you if you don't if anyone never used one of these for your vacuum pump they're fantastic you don't have to have a plug in nearby you can pull off power off your normally like your disconnect box or for this case we're gonna I have the system off inside so we're just gonna pull the power off the uh, outdoor unit so just like that grounds hot flat spot for your vacuum pump our vacuums open everything else is open and that's why I'm using this uh, the s man instead of my probes got a micron gauge inside of it so that's definitely what we need right now make sure all your lines are tight and let's get started on the vacuum All right, we're at about 35 minutes, 
698. It's just dropped below 700. So we're going to let it go. We're going to try our best to get it 600 flat. And that should be that should be good. So a little bit longer. And while we're waiting, I forgot to uh, to mention um, there's one other thing I didn't record. Um, it's just hard for me to record with this with a uh, you, you know using what I got. Um, but I did replace the filter dryer. I put a new filter dryer on. Um, so that's that's the number one thing. If you're ever opening this system, if you're ever having an issue with the TXV or any type of flow issue, restriction, um, any compressor problem, you can usually uh, just say anytime you're <clears throat> opening the system to replace anything, you want to replace that filter dryer. Um, so I got it replaced and um, just wanted to throw that in there just in case uh, you know you was wondering but yes replace filter dryer every time all right guys five seven six it's been about an hour and 15 hour and 20 minutes to get down to this point so this is a really good vacuum i've got um the refrigerant scales ready that's why four ports so nice to have so you really should get one if you don't have one. Um, all right, so for the refrigerant, it's 201 ounces. 201 ounces is 12 pounds, 5 ounces. And the way you get that, if you don't know, is you um, <clears throat> will take, there's 16 ounces in a pound. So 16 divided by 201, 12.5. All right, so let's, uh, let's get this, the vacuums turned off. All right, close liquid line keep our suction open that. All right. and then we're gonna I already got the tank on make sure we have our liquid in all right all right it's time to charge it Let's turn it on and get to pumping. 12.5 is what we're looking for. Open it all the way up. There's a lot of refrigerant going in this thing. goes in pretty quick when you got a good vacuum on it all right so I'm gonna get it to 12.5 uh, 12 pounds 5 ounces and I'll start the video back when we're gonna kick it on all right so what we're gonna do <clears throat> we're gonna get this thing close uh, with the, the s-man gauges and once we get it really close to dialed in I'm gonna throw the probes on it and put the uh, probes at inside for the Delta T and then we can really dial it in exactly where we want it um, So it calls for 12.5 and then we're gonna add about six to seven ounces for the line set All right, so it stopped at 12.3 Let's go get this thing kicked on All right, so our pressures are starting to climb up I'm waiting to see where it's gonna be at and Then we'll start adding a little more refrigerant to it let this thing uh, just run for a few minutes see where it's gonna land all right so we're gonna end up about right here it's going up and down it's still metering up and down trying to get it correct so we're gonna add a little more to it I'm gonna stop it at 13 all right guys got everything hooked up man this thing's looking much better um sub colon might look a little high i did look <clears throat> um into the the ring manuals and found that the average sub colon this is a five ton unit is in between 12 and 15 is what they're saying from the factory so we're um we're looking really good the um, superheat looks really good uh, remember last time we couldn't get it down below like 25 so definitely corrected the issue and I think that this this uh, suction line might they might, it might be a little too small that's in here anyway so that could also affect the way the uh, the pressures look um, when it's trying to cool 
Just a last look. I, I don't think I showed you the Delta T, but it's uh, it's looking great. Everything is uh, is really uh, <clears throat> running much better than it was. So it was definitely a TXV issue, and um, we'll be glad to go in and let them know that we got this thing straightened out. All right, guys. Well, I hope y'all enjoyed this one. Um, so they're real happy with everything. It's cooling really good. Um, I'm glad I was able to get this one on video. So um, if you enjoyed it, hit the like button. Uh, if you're not subscribed already, please subscribe. I appreciate it. And uh, there'll be some new content coming up real soon. See y'all later.